Hello everybody and welcome to today's micro nugget where we're going to learn how to create a bootable USB drive for installing a wide variety of Linux distributions. Now it used to be you just downloaded an ISO file and you would burn that ISO file onto a CD and you would boot the computer from the CD to install Linux. However, there's a couple problems. One, computers don't even usually have CD drives anymore. And two, Linux distributions are usually too big. Even the ones who've always boasted about being just one CD in size are now too big to fit on a CD. So the way we, we install Linux now is using a USB drive. Now there are great tools in Linux distributions like in Ubuntu for creating a startup disk or a startup USB drive. And so the, it begs the question, why not make a bootable drive with Linux? The problem is we run into this chicken and egg scenario, scenario because a lot of times people are running Windows or OS X and how are they going to install Linux so that they can make it a USB drive that they can install Linux with, right? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, if you don't have Linux, you can't use Linux to install Linux. That just doesn't work. The logic doesn't hold. So that's where we're going to look at this really awesome tool with a really bizarre name. It's called Unet Bootin. Now it looks like there should be a G on the end for booting, but there totally is no G. It's just Unet Bootin. And it's, you can get the website. We're going to go there in a second. UnetBootin.SourceForge.net. The cool thing about this, it will make USB drives that are bootable uh, to install Linux and many, many different varieties of Linux, but it's cross-platform as well. You can download it for Windows, OS 10 or Linux, wherever you want to create your USB drives on. We're going to use Windows today, which I know is unlike me. I'm normally the Linux guy, but most people are going to be coming from Windows and wanting to use Windows to download and set up their Linux machine. So we're going to do that. We're going to go into Windows and download that Unet Bootin program and see how it works. Okay, so here we are on a Windows 7 machine that I have all set up to download and set up this USB drive. Now, I've gone to the unetbootin.sourceforge.net website. And here you can see, remember I mentioned it's, it's cross-platform? Well, we're going to download the Windows version of Unet Bootin because we're on Windows and that's what we're going to use. So just click on that. Uh, you know how to download a file. Basically, you just wait and let it download. I'm going to click Save. It'll save it in my Downloads folder. And now that it's finished downloading, I actually don't need a browser open anymore at all. I do want to show you really quick in the computer folder here, I have this four gigabyte USB drive plugged in. So this is something I, I just plugged in the USB drive. It's empty. I actually formatted it to make sure that it would be completely empty. But this is just a USB drive. I picked four gigabytes because that's just what I had in my drawer here. And inside our downloads folder, we should now have... Oh, I actually have a couple ISO files. Good, I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, we have this UNet boot in Windows. Now, this is not an installer. It's just a program that you run. So double-click on it. It'll say, are you sure you want to run it? All the Windows things that it says. And this is this is the main interface for the program. Now, there's two ways that you can use it. You, If you already have an ISO image downloaded, like I actually, in my downloads folder, happen to have two ISO images here, you can select this radio button here. ISO and then browse what ISO you want to use. So like if I were to use this Ubuntu 12.04, I would click that. I would say it's a USB drive. Which drive letter? This is the only USB drive in my computer. It detects if it's a USB drive or not. And then I would just click OK and it would create a bootable installer for Ubuntu 12.04 desktop version right here. So th that's all it would take to do. However, if you don't have an ISO file downloaded, which you probably won't at first, you can click up here, this top radio button, select distribution, and then from this long list of Linux distributions, pick the one you want. Uh, let's say, like for example, I'm a big Zubuntu fan, so I'm going to say Zubuntu, and then it says what version do you want to install? And it goes from, you know, all the, the current versions, like 1204, uh, you can get all the way down here to the daily version if you want that. So every day they create one. Um, I would probably pick 1404 Live, 32-bit. So this is 64-bit, this is 32-bit. Live means like the desktop image so that you can just boot it and use it or install it. So you do that, click OK, and it actually goes and it will download an ISO file for you 
in as part of the process for creating the USB drive. Now I'm going to let this download, but it's 900 megabytes. So I'm going to pause the video because my bandwidth is not such that I can download 900 megabytes in a like five minute video. So hang on, I'll be right back. You won't even notice I'm gone. Holy cat biscuits, everybody. I don't know if you looked at the time before I said that I'd be right back, but it's been an hour that it's been downloading this ISO file. I therefore recommend that maybe you do go to the website and download yourself an ISO file and use that option when you're creating a USB file. Right now, it is actually going through the process of writing the files to my USB drive. Now, you can't see it, but the little light on my USB drive is flashing like crazy, and it will take a while to write the entire thing to the USB drive because, again, it's 866 megabytes that the file system, the ISO that we downloaded, it's pretty big. So it's going to take a long time. I think what I have it plugged into is a USB 1 port on my computer because I'm using a hub, so it's probably going to take an abnormally long time. Usually this takes about five minutes to do. So I'm going to pause it again and when I come back I'll probably have gray hair but we should be ready to test out this USB drive. Okay the bulk of the files have been copied. It's just finishing up those little other files that have to be copied over to the USB drive and then it will give us a message that it's all set. Now this message only gives you the option of exiting or rebooting. The reason it says reboot now is that it will probably reboot right from your USB drive if your computer is set up to boot from the USB drive. I'm actually going to do that, but I might have to fiddle in the BIOS to make sure that it'll boot from the USB drive, but I'll leave that for, to, for you to do on your own. Basically, we're going to show it start up the installer when it boots from the USB drive that we just created. So let's cross our fingers and hopefully that'll work. And here our system has booted up and UNET boot in with a fairly Spartan looking boot screen has started. But it's going to allow us to boot into that ISO image that we created with Windows without Linux involved at all. Apart from now where it's actually booting Linux from the USB drive. And here we can see Zubuntu, the version that we had UNET boot in automatically download that took an hour, <laughs> is finally booting up. We could run this just as a live image or we could install it. That's really all there is to creating a bootable USB drive for installing pretty much any version of Linux that you want or just copying an ISO, a bootable ISO file to a USB drive so that you can boot it as well. I hope that this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.